restore vintage fairground rides, organs, children's rides, um, and everything associated really with vintage fairground. It's a long story, but it's a hobby that's really got out of hand. Um, I'm an IT consultant during the day and happened to be bored one day looking on the internet and saw somebody that was restoring an old fairground ride and thought mm, that'd be an interesting thing to do. And 15 years later, here we are. The best examples of our work are down in Dreamland in Margate in Kent because we restored Noah's, Ark, Noah's Ark's Cox and Ends rides as some people would know them and various other projects and then we were approached by Dreamland because they wanted to reopen a traditional vintage seaside fairground park. So if you were ever to go down there you would see that all the vintage rides in there we restored them all. So gallopers or some people know them as carousels um, lots of different children's rides, Caterpillar rides, Brooklyn Speedway, Ghost Train, you name it, there's a park full of little boys projects in there. I find a project that I want to do and I enjoy doing it how I want to do it and then if someone wants to come along and buy it when it's finished, happy days, we'll, we'll sell it to them so long as they're, they're going to look after it otherwise all that work's been for nothing. So that tends to work better than doing a commercial restoration for someone where they'll say, I want gold paint, not gold leaf. No, it, we need to do it how we want to do it. So we want to do it properly um, because that's the fun of doing it for us. And if they want to own it then at the end of it, then great. The things that we restore tend to come to us, they tend to find us. We get telephone calls from showmen, fairground families saying we've got this in storage and every single thing that they send us, according to the showman, a good wash and you can open it this afternoon and I think I've only ever seen one instance where that's been the case and there have been extremes where we have literally exhumed things out of bushes with fork trucks and telehandlers from brambles and everything and, and they've been little more than a pattern. So um, I think one of the biggest projects we ever did was a Brooklyn's racetrack and that was exactly that. We were literally pulling it out of brambles and it was crumbling on the forks of the fork truck but there was enough of it left to be used as a pattern. Um, so it, it can be completely different, depends, everyone's different really. Yeah, many years ago, I just finished restoring a fairground ride, which was a motorcycle speedway, and I wanted somewhere to store it. And so I put an ad in the Wakefield Express saying, storage wanted for two vintage lorries, because this ride was packed on two vintage lorries. And we met the guys here, and uh, they answered our advert and said, yeah, you can store it, what is it? And so from storing two vintage lorries in a corner of one of their buildings, we then eventually thought this would be a great place to actually do the restoration so we took over half of one of the buildings and then subsequently took over the other half and the, the chap that owns the firm here uh, who is in fact our landlord he loves the old vintage stuff he has his own collection of vintage lorries and so we kind of have a running joke with him where that's it I'm not buying anything else and he gives me the same speech and then occasionally a ride will sneak in the back door or a lorry will appear for him I'm still not buying anything else Paul are we? No, no and so We've got a really sympathetic landlord, and that makes it possible, really. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we have um, two or three people here full time, but we employ fairground artists mainly um, all over the country. And there's only really, there's a lot of people can do it, but there are only really two or three that we use who are very good at different styles of fairground art. Bless them, they all think that they can do all styles and they can't, so there's, there's no one can. So we, if we need a scenic artist, we specialize, We have two ladies, one in Gloucestershire and one local to, to us here. And if we have 50s art that in the style of Fred Fowle or Edwin Hall, the sort of legendary fairground artists, we have a couple of other people that we use, a chap in York and another one in London. So it's um, a lot of, it, of that work is outsourced to those people and you just have to try and look at the ride, look at what's needed and choose the person who you think's best for that kind of work. But everything comes back here to be done. The biggest and most ludicrous fairground ride in terms of vintage rides that there ever was is a moon rocket ride. 
which is about the size of a waltzer ride. It's sort of 60 feet across, but very high at the back and very low at the front. And you, it's a, basically a tube of rocket that you all sit in, and one behind each other in a row. Um, there weren't that many of them made. They're the biggest, heaviest, most ludicrous fairground ride you could imagine, which is why even in the heyday, they, they, didn't, they weren't that popular with showmen because you needed an army of men to get them around. And that's about the only thing we haven't done. And that, one of the reasons for that is because they are such a crazy project and there are only two of them survive. One of them is actually in the National Fairground Museum down in Devon, but they also had the remains of another one that was owned by a famous Yorkshire showman called Ling. And they had it packed away down there lurking around and that, no one would have ever taken it on. But there was a, a chat with the head of the museum that was a Facebook chat a few months ago where he was very interested to acquire a hoopla round stall that we'd recently acquired to restore. And he, he said, we've been talking down here and we don't suppose you'd fancy swapping a moon rocket for that round stall, would you? And I just flippantly said, I oh, go on then. <laughs> so up on the shelves behind everything is the Ling's moon rocket waiting to be done. And when we do that, that will be the most insane restoration we've ever done. This has been an evolving thing. Historically, we've um, restored these rides and they've been sold and gone to other people. But more recently, we've decided that we're actually going to keep them all now. So we have, we actually own the waltzer that we stood next to today, which is the most original, most probably the most important fair, vintage fairground machine of any kind anywhere in the world, in my view. We also have the Shaw's Ark. We have a Dodgeham track, a dive bomber, um, some lovely children's rides and I think the plan is going to be that we're going to keep all these rides ourselves now and we're going to use them for private hire. So we did a, a friend of mine had a, a big birthday in autumn and we took the dive bomber, Dodgem and um, the speedway ride and, and all out, laid it all out in the grounds of his house and it was great fun. So we think we're going to do more of that. So hopefully the building that we're in will turn into half of it will be a workshop and half of it will be a sort of garage for all the finished rides that we can take out as we please. So I suspect that's going to be almost like a new business model for us next year. Um, and it's really come about a little bit by accident. We didn't envisage doing that, but we enjoyed doing it. So we're going to have a go.